What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning back to the Alma Mac here on 93.3 CFMU. I am your host, Severa Wes, PhD student here at McMaster. And if you are a graduate student here at McMaster or across Canada or actually anywhere in the world, really, perhaps by this time you have heard of the three minute thesis or the three MT. Perhaps your university has this, which is a university-wide competition for graduate students. These graduate students must present their research and its wider impact in three minutes or less to a panel of non-specialist judges. Now here at McMaster, we have had the pleasure of having the 3MT for the past several years, but unfortunately due to the pandemic in 2020, McMaster had to switch gears. And that is why uh, last year, for the first time, McMaster initiated a Gradflix video competition. So what is Gradflix? Gradflix is a video competition where graduate students have one minute to share their research, research story for a chance to win prizes and be featured in McMaster's Gradflix showcase. The showcase will be happening on April 5th and it'll be streaming live on YouTube. Now, if that has you a bit anxious, whether it's thinking about your research, consolidating it into one minute or less, or if it's the video skills that may be involved, crafting the story, fear not, because we have two, not only 3MT experts, but Gradflix experts here to help share their stories, their tips, and help you submit the best video submission possible. So I'd like to invite my two guests to introduce themselves first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about their uh, upcoming presentation on Gradflix. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Megan Beerhout. I'm a PhD student at McMaster in the Medical Sciences program. And how I became interested um, in Gradflix actually started through Three Minute Thesis. Uh, back in 2019, during the first year of my master's, I competed in McMaster's 3MT competition. Um, and I also uh, was a finalist in that competition. Um, and from participating in that, I kind of um, heard about uh, Dr. John Bandler, um, fellow students who were competing in the competition were like, oh, you need to go see John Bandler to work on your script. Uh, he gives great feedback. He'll coach you through it. And unfortunately, I heard about John too late uh, in 2019. But after the competition, um, I contacted him because I knew um, that he had done some filming of the competition. I kind of wanted to see my video and get some feedback on it um, post-mortem. So I went and met with John maybe a few months after the competition and um, we dissected my video and I learned a whole bunch. And uh, from there, I started talking about competing in the 2020 3MT competition because um, it is something that McMaster was doing annually. So we got started early. Uh, John was helping me out and coaching uh, me to prepare for the 2023 MT competition, which unfortunately was canceled just a few days before it occurred due to the pandemic in March 2020. Uh, so with bated breath, I waited until 2021 wondering if there would be some type of virtual 3MT, if nothing would occur altogether, or if McMaster would do something else. Um, and soon enough, we heard about the Gradflix competition, and it was a no brainer that I wanted to participate. And of course, uh, John offered a helping hand and um, helped me with crafting my script and um, gave me some video tips as well. So um, kind of from from being a learner, I then transitioned into um, wanting to to kind of share the advice about things that I learned with my fellow graduate community. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I just have a keen interest in knowledge translation and uh, communication, especially about my research that I do as a graduate student. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. So many transitions, Megan, I love that. <laughs> Not only did you transition um, from in-person to uh, video, but also transitioning, like you mentioned, from a learner role to now this almost mentorship role that you've taken on, um, uh, helping out other graduate students build the best submission possible. So I really like that journey that you outlined. Thank you very much. And Dr. Bandler, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself and share a little bit about uh, your involvement with the 3MT and Gradflix? 
Yeah, well, of course, as, 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 as Megan just indicated, I've been involved with 3MT for quite a number of years, and I've you know, really had the pleasure of working with quite a number of winners or high-level uh, award winners in 3MT, not only at McMaster University, but also um, with an IEEE conference that I've uh, contributed to as well. Um, and and we're now in, that conference is now in its sixth year of Three Minute Thesis. And um, one of the things that is worth mentioning is while the Three Minute Thesis was an in-person uh, event, uh, in the last two years, my conference has done the Three Minute Thesis online virtually. And I, I, I um, co-organized, co-chaired and mentored all the candidates for the an online version of Three Minute Thesis. It's now a mandatory event in my department, electrical and computer engineering. Um, so of course, some of them are dragged reluctantly kicking and screaming, why do I have to do this? But many of them, interestingly, once they've done it, they say, oh, they're so glad that they did. And um, anyway, it's, it, I mean, I could go on for hours on the background, but I, I got involved in Three Minute Thesis, well, when the university, McMaster, switched to 3MT, uh, switched to Gradflix, I should say, a year ago, um, and I was, it captivated me as well. I, I loved the medium. Um, it it uh, attracted me. And when I heard and saw the winning video for 2021, the University of Waterloo, uh, that really clinched it. I, I just loved that video, uh, that winning video from Waterloo from last year. And um, so I did work with a few students last year towards the McMaster Three Minute Thesis, including Megan. <laughs> yeah, I, th I like that you um, mentioned that uh, with the conference that you were helping out with, they transitioned from the 3MT, but just virtually. So they were just delivering their presenta presentation virtually. And then here at Mac, we have this video format that we're asking students to submit. So I think, um, I think later on, we can talk a little bit more about some of the advantages and disadvantages to both platforms. And I'm, uh, I guess I'm curious why Mac uh, chose this video route rather than just presenting well, live. The, the answer is very, very simple. It's much easier to ask somebody else to do a video and submit a video yeah. and, and then judge it. I mean, that's the bottom line. It, the online three minute thesis was a grueling, a grueling event of uh, organization. It means it means record it. And what we did, what I did personally, is I individually recorded every single candidate, every single finalist. And then I put I put together the video myself, all the videos myself. They were YouTube ready before the judges saw them. So I actually created YouTube ready videos. Mm -hmm. So I, it was pretty clear why McMaster decided on Gradflix. It was just a, a no brainer solution. That, that's, let's throw it right at the grad students, let them worry about it. We'll give them a whole list of rules and regulations. And then we'll just, we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, but thankfully, the students will not be left completely by themselves. So we're not throwing them to the wolves because you have this upcoming session for the students on February 8th, right. uh, where you're going to be talking about the art of Gradflix. So can you tell us a little bit more about that session? Well, we're calling it the art of Gradflix uh, to snow them or to show them. And um, in other words, of course, what that that that, that the sub the sub um, uh, heading there uh, is uh, to show them or to snow them implies: do we do you shower the audience with information and let them sort it out, or do you actually guide them through this maze of information? And uh, it's just easy to do an information dump and let the audience kind of figure it out for themselves. That's the kind of easy way. Um, and of course, this also sets up a challenge for Megan and me, because when we're suggesting a certain format to show them rather than to snow them, uh, it's kind of incumbent upon us as presenters of that particular session not to snow mm. the audience <laughs> with information and don't do this and do this and don't do this and do this and so and after a while, you have a dizzying array of you know, what to do and what not to do. Um, so actually, 
living up to that expectation is something was a bit of a challenge for us. Definitely. I agree. And um, uh, as um, the development of this workshop has been going on, um, John and I have been very careful to take our own advice. And we've been discussing some of the little nitty gritty things. And Oh, should we do this? How should we order the slides? And what it always seems to be coming back to is, okay, well, it's to show them or to snow them. So are we going to follow that? Are we going to make sure that the theme of the workshop is actually following the content of the workshop? Right. I'm curious, uh, what made you um, see the need to have such a workshop like this? Like, did, well, you, did you look at previous competitions and say, oh, there's like a consistent uh, theme where competitors may not have um, been optimizing their potential? Like, what, what kind of gap are you trying to fill with this workshop? Well, don't forget, don't forget, whether you're writing a script, whether it's communication, writing, presenting, and video production. Mm. I mean, that's a vid, producing films or videos is a gigantic industry. I mean, there are there are, is a myriad of of of, of um, talents involved in this. The question is. Uh, you know, developing this talent can take you an awfully long time unless you're shown or taught or given, guided in some particular fashion. So, uh, of course, there's a lot of people with may, may have a, a, a kind of a natural or acquired talent over a number of years, but there's a lot of students who would be just floundering in terms of presentations. And I think um, guiding the students to do their best is something that, um, you know, certainly I aspire to and Megan aspires to. I totally agree. And um, also being a student currently, um, when these types of things are offered, um, I find them extremely valuable. And if I was uh, a registrant for this uh, event this year and I heard about this workshop, I definitely want to go. And um, John's, you know, a communication connoisseur and uh, he's been hosting these workshops for 3MT, I think on an annual basis as well. Um, and um, it was definitely something that was extremely useful to graduate students, um, myself included. So um, I just, I just find it to be a really helpful resource being someone in the position of a student as well. And one of the things to follow up, you know, uh, one of the one of the spin-offs from Gradflix last year for me personally, and also for Megan, is 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 the short film that I um, created with a team put together with two candidates for the Gradflix, um, you know, Emily Wood and 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 Megan um, worked with me on a film. Uh, following the Gradflix competition. So we actually, you know, went beyond what we had learned. And uh, some of the elements of Gradflix, in a way, featured in this, uh, in this film. What was interesting was um, the film was kind of originally written as a play that would have been um, presented or would have been performed in person. Um, so John and I... Um, and uh, Emily as well, who um, is the other uh, Gradflix um, contestant that John was mentioning, um, had discussions uh, kind of talking about, well, how do we make sure that things are portrayed as well through a film that's recorded um, as to in person? So, um, you know, in, in the pandemic, the theme of transitioning from in person to online communication is uh, definitely something that's connected all of this. Mm -hmm. And potentially back to in person again, um, depending how this uh, pandemic keeps going. But on that note, I am interested to hear about how you folks pivoted from providing workshops surrounding in person live 3MTs to now providing a workshop on this Gradflix competition that is not only now a video competition, but now one minute in length instead of the three minutes. What were some similarities that you could still uh, draw from, from your previous workshops? And what were some things that you kind of had to think about uh, had to be done differently? 
very good question. You know, what it, I, one of the things that I think we we kind of um, uh, came to the conclusion came to the conclusion a year ago is that even for a one minute video there is some kind of a core image of uh, one image that somehow represents the look and the feel of that particular video similar to the single static slide a core image that characterizes that video so that's one of the things that to me is a transition from a static slide to a core image it was kind of interesting. It came to me over a period of weeks and months. Um, the other thing is the titles. There's, you know, the title of a three-minute thesis, the title of Gradflix could be identical. You need, mm -hmm. you need some title that describes the work in some, you know, useful, um, engaging way for an audience. And then the opening and closing lines. The opening and closing lines for three minute thesis for Gradflix are, could be absolutely identical. There is really, you, you have to open up with a couple of sentences. You have to close with a couple of sentences, whether it's a one minute format or a three minute format. And I think that, um, that, that when, I, when I examine those opening and closing lines from three minute thesis and from Gradflix, they're virtually interchangeable. I would challenge in fact, there's an interesting challenge that we could do is to create some opening and closing lines and ask the audience, you know, where do you think this comes from? Is this from a Gradflix mm. video or is this from Three Minute Thesis? And I'm sure they couldn't tell the difference. So that's, that's, that's the essence of the uh, kind of transition, the thing that kind of seems to move. And it, the, the, what's different in terms of a script is, the, is what's in the middle, what comes between the opening and closing. I mean, the opening is once upon a time and the closing is, you know, who so-and-so lived happily ever after. Yeah, and to add to that, um, the, uh, the story that you're telling, um, whether it be in a three minute thesis uh, in person, presentation or through a one minute video um, stays the same. You are telling a story to your audience in both scenarios. And like John mentioned, you have to you have to have some opening lines to hook the audience in and get them interested. Um, and you have to have it round off full circle. So there's almost like a sense of completion and satisfaction at the end of your story. Um, so whether that be uh, through three minutes or through one minute, um, the element of story uh, is very important and is definitely very much present in both settings. What would you say to students that are interested in sharing their research, sharing their story, but they're very daunted by the fact that this is in video format and they may not be uh, that familiar with creating videos or have never done something like that? Is this still an appropriate competition for them? Megan, you go ahead. Um, I would say yes, definitely. You don't have to be an expert or have extensive experience in creating videos or have any experience in creating videos to enter and um, to, to enjoy and do well in this competition. Um, there are a bunch of different ways uh, that you can create this video. Um, there are a bunch of different mediums that you can use. And um, I wouldn't say that any of them are um, impossible to become good at. Uh, of course, there's a learning curve, but um, it's not extremely steep in, in a sense where it would take you, I don't know, months or years to be able to produce something. Um, yes, it is daunting, but it's very much doable. And um, there are definitely people who had no experience with certain softwares that are able to create something uh, amazing. And um, uh, one of the main elements in uh, Gradflix is your script and telling your story, like I was just mentioning. And um, yeah, as, as a graduate student, I'm sure a lot of us are very much used to giving presentations and having to talk about our research. So um, being able to kind of 
you know, morph that into a grad flex script is something that um, is very doable for graduate students who, who are communicating all the time. Um, so I know video creation can be a bit of a daunting task, but um, it is it is very rewarding in the end and uh, it's extremely doable. I was I was kind of daunted to begin with, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you figure it out as you go and it goes well. <laughs> Yeah, you know, following on on that, I mean, you could set up a camera on a tripod in your lab and film yourself, film yourself uh, talking to the camera with uh, with your equipment behind you. Mm. The camera is on the la- on a on a on a on a tripod. You can then edit and just cut off the you know cut off the ends of that video. Get a little clip out of that. You can do that. You can do it all yourself from that point of view. That's one way of doing it. Another way would be a voice over PowerPoint. And you could have moving images in PowerPoint. You could import videos. There may be public domain or creative commons videos that we would be allowed to use. You could import those into PowerPoint and, and literally export that PowerPoint as an MP4 uh, with you not even visible. You could be, vo- it could be voiceover. So um, there are so many elements. And uh, if you look at the... Th- Gradflex videos that are out there online. I've seen puppet shows, uh, stop motion. I mean, I- I- anything is possible. Uh, it- it's the-, the whole idea of the video is that there is some kind of movement, whether it's you moving, speaking, walking, or whatever, or words that are galloping across a, a PowerPoint uh, slide or words that are kind of zooming in or out. Uh, I mean, the idea of motion, Mm -hmm. the idea of sound, voiceover, you can put the script right onto uh, onto the film itself or the video itself. I love all the different ways uh, you, both of you describe that a competitor could approach this video, especially some ways that I didn't consider. Um, I think this kind of really allows a person's creativity to shine. They can take it in any direction that they like. Yeah, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. I, I, I think, you know, you, you know, you have to you have to weigh how much time you have, how much time you want to spend. And quite frankly, in terms of science communication, any amount of time is worthwhile. It's never wasted. I, I just don't think it's wasted. Mm. Um, I, I think with all the emphasis on grad by, for grad students to write the next conference paper, think about how much time it takes to write that next conference paper. And that next conference paper, in most cases, will do nothing for your career. Mm. Whereas spending the same amount of time on a presentation learning a presentation skill or doing grad flicks will probably pay off much greater rewards in your career. And like John mentioned, um, it's you can choose whatever medium you're comfortable with here to create your video. And uh, it's it's about being creative and it's, it's nice to get to choose uh, what you want to work with and um, turn that into a final product when um, in other presentations such as conferences for example um, you kind of get strict criteria on what you have to do you have to have a 15 minute oral presentation with an accompanying powerpoint and that's it but here um, you get to to pick what you want to do and uh, really show um, yourself and your personality and exactly how you want to communicate your research through your video. So um, that was something I really enjoyed. Um, You can take it in whatever direction you want. Um, And that in a way also makes it less daunting as well, because it's like, okay, like I'm comfortable with making my video this way. And I know that I can produce something that I think would be good quality in this way as well. So it's a little less, less scary in a sense. I know that for folks that attend your workshop on February 8th are going to get all the ins and outs of crafting the perfect grad flicks. But I know that we talked a lot about the importance of building a coherent story and narrative and the things that we should be doing as competitors. Can you briefly describe or list some things that we may want to avoid in this grad flicks competition? 
what are some things we shouldn't do if we want to build a good video? Well, are we okay? We're talking about the video or the script itself. Either, either or, either or. Two, two things. I think the, the one thing that's common to both the script and the uh, and, and the video is information overload. Uh, there's a dumping too many images that are flashing by at blistering speed, you know, in a, in, a, in your video, or on the other hand, having a having a gigantic script with too many words that you're racing through to beat that one minute deadline. So, so you, 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 I think to me, too many words or too many images is probably the biggest uh, thing to avoid. And I've noticed that, yes, if you're an incredibly articulate speaker, sure, incredibly articulate, very clear with great audio, you can speak very fast, but that still puts an incredible cognitive load on the audience. And I think you don't want to put that incredible load on the audience. Remember, the judges of this competition are going to be watching multiple videos. It's one video after another, after another, after another. And if you have another high intensity video with multiple images and too many words, it just, to me, just creates an incredible cognitive overload on the judges or the audience. And that's the thing to avoid. Yeah, and, and the game is in the name of the workshop to show them or to snow them. So John's talking about snowing them and uh, how that's probably not the most effective um, way to create your video, whether it be from the visual component or the story slash audio component. Um, something else, I guess, that comes to mind right away uh, on something you don't want to do um, is just avoiding... Um, you know, like low quality audio, if it's muffled, uh, if there's a cat meowing in the back, um, things like that. You want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to uh, to create a high quality audio track. Um, and, you know, things will happen. It's, it's unlikely that you're going to get your perfect audio or video recording in just one 60 second go. Um, that's something that's extremely difficult. So, you know, just be prepared to, to have multiple takes and um, to pick the best clips um, from your footage and put them into your final video to avoid um, where, you know, the audio or video is lower quality because that's something that can almost be distracting and take away from the message. But as long as you give yourself enough time um, to, to uh, kind of correct those things when they do happen, because they will happen, you know, um, noises in, in the room. I can hear my dog walking in the hallway right now. He might come bark at the door. So, um, you know, just making sure that, that uh, yeah, you're trying to avoid those things as best as you can in your final video. So your workshop uh, coming up on February 8th, that will be held virtually for people to learn more about Graphflix and kind of building the best submission possible. Right. Um, and then I believe the deadline to register for this Graphflix competition is the 25th of February, but you don't need to have a finished product once you register. No, okay. no, no, you don't, no. The, the deadline for video submission is March the 11th. Um, and the other thing is, uh, beyond the actual um, workshop, I'll be available to coach students. Who, they just have to email me and uh, I'll be happy to work with uh, one or more students that, that, that ask, ask for help, just have to ask for help. That's, that's just so wonderful. I was actually just going to follow up on that uh, as to whether like any sort of accessible mentorship would be available for these students who do decide to proceed. So that's so great to hear that uh, you're still continuing your mentorship. And We'll be sure to put all of the links to the registration and any relevant emails or websites in our show notes below. So make sure you check that out. Great. Well, I would like to thank our two wonderful guests today, uh, John and Megan, for joining us and talking about their experience, both through the 3MT and now the Graphlix competition. We heard a little bit more about what you can expect from their upcoming workshop. And then even once the workshop concludes, uh, these wonderful individuals are available for any potential mentorship or advice uh, in case you need another pair of eyes to review your uh, script or video. So thank you very much for coming on the show and talking about your important work. Thanks, Sawara. It's great. Great to be interviewed again. Yes. <laughs>
Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you once again. And thank you to all of you who are listening here on 93.3 CFMU. We will see you again next week.